Hello, I'm Dr. Scott Jens from Sandbox, a business coaching service. I serve as the facilitator of this iThrive Contributor Profile Series, where today I'm interviewing a key contributor, Dr. Larry Golson. Dr. Golson is from Asheville, North Carolina, where he is the practice visionary at Envision Eye Care. And of course, you would have to enjoy mountain experiences when you live there. Welcome, Dr. Golson. Thank you, Dr. Jens. It's great to be here, and I'm excited to uh, talk with you today. Thanks. Hey, tell us about life in Asheville. I understand you mountain bike. What's it like there? Yeah, it's a great uh, community to be in, and uh, it's tons of outdoor activities. We've got a very robust restaurant and music scene as well, and the newest on the scene are all the breweries. So if you like beer and mountains and food, this is the place to come visit. Got it. Well, uh, it's a great place to live. Clearly, you're enjoying yourself. Let's get into your, one of your passions. You are really caring about the nature of development of your clinical team. Can you give the listeners an example of how you drive the development of the people on your team? Sure. So we started to realize that the team is, is fundamentally makes up our brand in the community. And at first, I thought that we could just deliver a great experience to our patients and we would thrive. And then I started to realize that if we actually put it um, first and make sure that we're providing development for them, then they're going to take great care of our patients in turn. And so part of our purpose, or actually it is our purpose at Envision Eye Care, is to optimize the quality of lives of our team members and our patients. And we used to actually say our patients and our team members, and we flipped that because we started to realize that the more we can help develop our team members, uh, the more they're gonna have ownership in their own positions and roles in our office, and therefore um, take better care of our patients in turn. So um, a lot of what we do is centered around understanding what their dreams are as individuals. And that might even extend beyond our practice one day, but at least if we understand what their career goals are and their dreams, then we can start to provide opportunities for them to develop themselves. Uh, so on the other side of staff development, you say that staff turnover is one of the biggest threats to our industry. What is the key to taking a qualified but unhappy employee to a productive and happy employee? Yeah, I think it's uh, a lot has to do with understanding what is making them unhappy. And over the years that I've been running this practice, that can run the gamut of personal challenges in the home front uh, to issues with a co-team member to issues with leadership. Uh, and sometimes it's just not the right fit for that individual, but uh, it starts with a very candid conversation. And the, the way to, that we've understood to get the best information from the team member is to actually begin with a high level of trust and we found that once, once the team member believes that we are after their highest possible good as an individual, they're much more willing to open up and share whatever it is that's causing poor performance. Do you as a doctor owner then get involved with that employee directly as a matter of building trust? Or do you have somebody else in your team in leadership do it? And the reason I'm kind of smiling and laughing here is because I used to take a much more active role in that. And, uh, and as part of the development of even my managers, I'm trying to take a less active role to let them have the ownership in, in helping team members reach peak performance. And so what I'm doing at this point now is more coaching my managers on how to coach an individual rather than getting directly involved with the, um, with the team member itself. Got it. Um, so you've talked about making yourself as a business leader indispensable, and that was an example of it. How do you do that, but also drive the business in the direction you want? I'm assuming you must have a pretty good management tier in your practice, but tell us how you have found yourself to become less uh, needed and more indispensable. Yeah, um, so to become um, indispensable, or excuse me, to become dispensable in the practice, uh, meaning that I, I kind of don't want to be needed in a way. Um, the reason I want to do that is to free myself up to work on the development of the practice, and it's as our listeners know, if you're trying to see patients all the time and directly manage, it's almost impossible to work on the actual practice. And so, um, you know, for me, what we've used is a system called the EOS or Entrepreneurial Operating System developed by Gina Wickman in a book called Traction. 
And it basically helped us organize the practice from an organizational accountability standpoint so that each person along the list knows exactly who they report to and uh, what the accountability structure is. And that level of clarity helps us really start to delegate and elevate our team members. And so I have a really tremendous uh, optical manager. Um, I have a clinical manager as well as the other optometrist in the practice who is uh, excellent at what he does. And then now we have an optical manager too that manages the optical, which is for my practice, a really big part of our revenue stream. So are there measures that you give to these key people that are set out in advance and then you follow those over time? Or do you look back in time and say, well, how did we do? This is what I perceive you to do. Are, are you a forward or a backward sort of looker when you manage? Traditionally backwards. And uh, this, this uh, entrepreneurial operating system has helped me create more forward thinking. And so uh, what I'm developing now, we have a 10 year plan for the practice. And from that 10 year plan, we have a three year plan. And from the three year plan, we have our one year goals. And then even from there, we have our 90 day rocks. And our 90 day rocks is kind of like the main things that we wanna do in a quarter of a year to support the yearly goal, which then supports the three year and then the 10 year. And breaking it down even more from that, Dr. Jens, we even have weekly to do. So we have uh, a weekly, it's called a level 10 meeting. And from that meeting, each person in the meeting leaves that meeting with a to do. And the next meeting we follow up and say, did we actually get those to do's done? And so that way we can kind of track our weekly performance, which feeds into our quarterly performance and, and so on. And what I found is that we, not only did we used to look backwards at how we were performing, now we're moving toward more, to, more of a forecasting forward look, but we also started to um, started to really think about not taking a shotgun approach, but taking a very much more of a like a single-minded, like these are our priorities. And so much happens where we want to like do all these different things all at once. And we used to do that. And then nothing really good, nothing really got done well. Everything just kind of got done half. And then, you know, we were on to the next thing. And it really is really frustrating for our staff too, because we never really had any stick to or persistence, uh, perseverance. And so now we have much more, there's a saying that you can't throw a rock over the fence. So once we've, we've established our three month rocks, we stick to them. And if something else comes up where we're like, oh, that's a really good idea. Let's put that on what's called the issues list. And the next time we're doing our quarterly planning, we'll see if that makes it to the priority top of the top of the priority list. So a wonderful example of how you can really invest in management structure. And obviously you're going to be an important iThrive contributor and people are going to love the content you're going to bring. How do you hope to inspire ECPs who are going to be viewing your content on the iThrive site? Yeah, well, I think that um, from my own personal story, because uh, when I started my practice 12 years ago, almost 13, which is hard to even believe that that's been that long, <laughs> it goes by quick. Um, what I recognize is um, initially how I really just wanted it to be the way I wanted it to be. And I was stuck on that. And the more I've had to become a leader by just the position that, I, that I'm in, um, in my practice, I started to realize that it's a collaborative approach that through my own trials and tribulations of getting past my own self and realizing that there's much more wisdom and intelligence in the group than there is in one person, um, I think that I can help other ECPs remain relevant in today's competitive market because I feel like where there's so much pressure on us from so many different angles um, that we have to become really smart at, and intelligent at what we do as running private practices. And that my hope is to be able to share my own story along the way uh, to help others along their way. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Golson, for your fantastic views. You overcome rocks both in your business management and on your mountain bikes, and I hope you're successful <laughs> with both. Thank you so much. For all of you in the iThrive community, please make sure to follow Dr. Golson's content as it comes out. I'm sure you're going to find it help you find success. And make sure to check out our other iThrive contributor profiles. Until then, be great at all you do.